OK, so 2 plus root 3 all raised to the power of 10 is really, really close to being an integer. We get this with five nines after the decimal point, so it's very, very close to being this integer. And this seems really weird, because why should this irrational number raised to the power of 10 give us something that's really, really close to being an integer? Well, actually, there's nothing special about the power of 10 here. We could do the same with 2 plus root 3, let's say, to the power of 11, and we'd get 1,956,243.9999999. So we'd actually get six nines rather than five here. And we could do the same thing, do 2 plus root 3, but let's do this to a really big power now, we'll do this to the power of 100. So I won't write this out, but you'll get an integer, 0.999, where we have a total here of, there'll be 57 nines in the end. So it seems like this is getting better, or getting closer to being an integer, as we raise this to larger and larger powers. So why is this? We've always got something 0.99999, where we seem to be missing something to make this into an integer. And what we're really missing here is, we can think of this as 2 plus root 3 to the power of n in our more general case, where we've just got any power of n, and what we're missing is 2 minus root 3 to the power of n. So the big idea here is, when we actually expand both of these brackets and add them together, we're actually going to get an integer. So we've got this as our extra part that would make this actually equal to an integer. So just to explain why this is actually equal to an integer, we can expand this, so our first one, using the binomial expansion of 2 plus root 3 to the power of n, it starts off 2 to the n, then we'll have n choose 1, 2 to the n minus 1 times root 3, then we've got n choose 2, 2 to the n minus 2 times root 3 squared, we'll just do one more term, we'd have n choose 3 times 2 to the n minus 3 times root 3 cubed. So you can see we've got some of these terms are just going to be integers, like for example our first term here and our term where we've got the root 3 squared gives us an integer. So this is everything we get, and then that just keeps on going for 2 plus root 3 to the n until we get to our final term, root 3 to the n. But then when we have this 2 minus root 3 to the n, we're going to get something very similar. So we'll have plus 2 to the power of n, but everywhere where we have a root 3, we'll replace it by the negative of root 3. So then it's actually take away n choose 1 times 2 to the n minus 1 root 3. So you can see these two terms will actually cancel with each other when we add everything up. But then for our next term with the root 3 squared, we'd have negative root 3 all squared. So this wouldn't actually change, this would still be a positive term. But that's okay because this term is actually still going to be an integer. And then for this one where we've got root 3 to the power of 3, where we do negative root 3 to the power of 3, this would give us a negative term, so we take away n choose 3, 2 to the n minus 3 times root 3 all to the power of 3. We keep going like that. So you can see all of the terms that actually have the square root terms in them just cancel with the other one for 2 minus root 3 to the power of n. And similarly, we've got here this term and this term cancel with each other. So all we're left with then are the terms which are actually integers. So we've got 2 to the n, got another 2 to the n, and this term we've got root 3 squared, and similarly where we've got the root 3 to the power of 4, or root 3 to the power of 6, wherever we've got root 3 to an even power, we keep those terms, but that's okay, because that gives us an integer. And everything where we've got an odd power of root 3 in the binomial expansion of this sum, they're just going to cancel, like we've seen here, for the power of 1 and the power of 3. So then we can say for certain then that 2 plus root 3 to the power of n, whichever positive integer power of n we choose, plus 2 minus root 3 to the power of n is indeed going to be an integer. So this is really useful now because we've got this 2 minus root 3 to the n term, which is effectively just what we need to add to our 2 plus root 3 to the n term to turn it into an integer. And because 2 minus root 3, this is actually around 0 0.3, so this number, as we raise this to larger and larger powers, is going to give us a smaller and smaller answer. So 2 minus root 3 to the n is around 0 0.3 to the power of n, which is going to be very small if we've got a big power. So even when we were working with a power of n equals 10, we can work out the size of this error term, 2 minus root 3 to the power of 10. This is around 2 times 10 to the negative 6. So this is a really, really small number. You can see this 10 to the negative 6 goes some way to explain why we have five nines after our decimal point there. 
And similarly, we can do the same for 2 minus root 3 to the power of 100. This is going to be around 6 times 10 to the negative 58. And again, this sort of explains why our error term there is so small, 10 to the negative 58. And here we had exactly 57 nines after our integer part. So this is a really nice way of seeing how, using this little error term raised to the power of n, you can see exactly how far away from being an integer we are. And now we'll finish off by looking at some different examples to really understand what's going on here. So unfortunately this doesn't work for any pair of numbers. You couldn't just take, for example, 4 plus the square root of 5 and raise this to a large power and expect this to be almost an integer. And the reason for this is that if we look at the difference term, our error term, 4 minus root 5, this is around 1.76. So when we raise this error term to a large power, it's actually going to stay big. It'll get bigger and bigger as we raise this to a bigger power. Whereas before, when we had 2 minus root 3, that was something which was small and would get smaller and smaller as we raise it to a larger power. So here, because our error term gets bigger and bigger, there's no reason to suspect that 4 plus root 5 to a large power should be particularly close to being an integer. And you can actually have an example where the difference between these two terms is less than 1, but we don't necessarily get something which is very close to being an integer. So a nice example of this would be 5 plus the square root of 17. And if we raise this to the power of 100, we're still going to get something which is approximately an integer. We get an integer, and then we have exactly nine nines afterwards. So this is reasonably close to being an integer. But if you contrast this with our example from before, 2 plus root 3 raised to the power of 100, that had 57 nines after the decimal point. And here we've only got 5. So this one doesn't seem to be giving as good an approximation for an integer. And the reason for this is that our extra term 5 minus root 17, this is around 0 0.87. So this is going to be getting smaller and smaller as we raise this to bigger and bigger powers. But if you contrast this with 2 minus root 3, which is only about 0 0.27, you can see our 2 minus root 3 term is much, much smaller. So when we raise this to a power of 100, we're going to get a much smaller error term and hence 2 plus root 3 to this large power is going to be much closer to an integer than we'd get with 5 plus root 17. And we can actually improve on our 2 and root 3 terms there to get something which gives us even better approximations for integers. So if we look at the example, let's say 8 plus the square root of 63 and raise this to the power of 10, this is going to give us something which is almost an integer where, so earlier we had 5 nines for our power of 10 after the decimal point, but here we're going to get 12 nines after our decimal point, where we have 8 plus root 63 to the power of 10. And this is even better if we do 8 plus root 63 to the power of 100. So earlier when we did 2 plus root 3 to the power of 100, we got 57 nines after the decimal point, but here we're going to get a whopping 120 nines after the decimal point. So this one gives us much closer approximations to integers much quicker. And this essentially revolves around the fact that 8 minus the square root of 63 is very close to being 0. So this is around 0 0.06. So this is already much smaller than 0 0.27. So then when we raise this to a power of 10 or to a power of 100, we're going to get something which is really, really small as our error term. And hence 8 plus root 63 raised to this power is going to be really, really close to being an integer, even better than we had with 2 plus root 3.